What's going on everyone? My name is Mandeep. Welcome back to another amazing episode. We're standing on the top floor of this brand new building in Yale Town and I'm very excited to show you guys this listing. And with me, we have the listing agent of this beautiful property, Sat. Hey guys, my name is Sat Swage. I'm with the Premier Property Marketing Team in West Coast Realty. And today we have a three bed, two bath condo in the 8X on the park, right next to a beautiful park. You've got water views. You've got amazing finishings by Brent Hill, yes. of course. And uh, one of the best things about this place is the Sky Lounge. Uh, you've got a fitness center, uh, you've got a yoga studio, you've got this amazing terrace that we're standing on out here, and you've got a full lounge with a kitchen and entertainment area. Yes, I'm so excited to show you guys this amazing condo. One last thing, Sat, what is this property listed at? Uh, we're just under 2.4 million. Awesome, let's go check out this amazing condo. Welcome to the inside of this beautifully built condo. There are so many things that I want to show you guys. I'm excited to show you guys the view, but first we're going to check out the inside. And the first thing is the amazing engineered hardwood that they've chosen for this place. It looks awesome. I love the color. The walls are white. And over here we have a little bit of storage space right behind this door. A little bit of a coat closet. Come check that out, Zach. And then behind this door right here is actually a laundry area. We got side by side. Bloomberg machines, I'm just gonna pop that open. And then you got the quartz countertop, a little bit of storage area over here and the rod to hang up whatever you would want. And uh, let's go into the condo. One of the first things that I actually comes to my attention is the amount of light that's coming into this area. Uh, before showing you guys the living room and the kitchen, I wanna show you guys the powder room. So follow me down this way and check this out. This looks amazing. The things that I like most about this place is the floating vanity and the uh, choice of the marble countertop. I think that looks amazing. And this is your mirror, but it also serves the purpose of actually holding some of your toothbrushes, toothpaste, whatever else you would want to put in there. Allows you to keep this area neat and clean because this is the powder room that all your guests will be using as well. You got the floating toilet right here with the flusher mounted onto the wall right there as well. I think that's really cool. And over here we got uh, the shub and the, uh, sorry, the shower and the tub right over here. <laughs> and then over, something that I'm noticing in a lot of these new, uh, uh, new homes is that they got the control on this side and the shower head on that side. I think that's pretty cool. All right, so now we're gonna go into the first of three bedrooms. So this has three bedrooms and two bathrooms. And uh, we got a pocket door here and a pocket door over here. So one of the problems with pocket doors is getting the door back out, but check this out. I'm gonna show you guys something really cool. Over here, you just press that and that's how you close this door. How cool is that? So we got a good size closet right in here. And then behind me, we have one of the three bedrooms, like I said, and this bedroom is special because it has its very own balcony. So I don't want to talk too much about the view because I want to show you guys the view from the other balcony over there. But uh, this is an amazing space to just hang out before you go to bed at night time. Your very own private balcony for this bedroom only. So follow me down this way. We're going to check out the rest of the place. And I just wanted to mention that the building has been built by Bren Hill Developments, very reputable builder in Vancouver. They did an amazing job. Over here we have the kitchen. Let's go check this out first. So the island is about, I'm gonna guess and say about between 10 and 11 feet. This thing is huge. You got counter, uh, quartz countertops on here with the waterfall edge, of course, you gotta have that. And then another cool thing about this area is that they have two-tone cabinetry. So you'll notice over here, the uppers and the lowers over here are white. And it's a little bit of a different material. I believe this is called PVC. And over here we have the wood veneer, the fridge is behind this, and it's a sub-zero fridge. It looks amazing, nice and big, completely lit up. A Little bit of Don Julio in there. <laughs> and over here we have uh, the Melee appliances. So you got the Melee range right here and the five burner gas cooktop, which is also Melee. And of course, you gotta have the marble backsplash slab, which is different from what they've used as a countertop. And I think that it really complements it really well. One of my favorite things about an island is uh, when they put the sink in the island. I don't know, for some reason, I just think that's really cool. And we got a chrome faucet right here. Like I said before, there's no handles anywhere here, right? I think that makes it look very sleek and modern, very stylish. 
We got the Panasonic built-in microwave right here, right? And then over here, we have the dishwasher. Can't even tell that it's the dishwasher. And of course, it's Miele as well. And some of the cabinets are actually pushed to open, so you just pop that one open just like that. That's pretty impressive. And it shuts just like that as well. Okay, and then we got some more storage right here as well. All right, so let's check out this area. And over here we have the dining table, and uh, uh, sorry, the dining room. Um, and over here we have stage seating for about six people. I think you could get a few more seats in here if you wanted to. And of course, every area of this condo takes advantage of that amazing view, right? I believe that is the west side, and then we have south side views as well over there. And we got bar stools, enough stools for four people. I'm pretty sure you could get a couple more stools in here as well. All right, so down here we have what would be considered the living room. And over here we got a couple couches. I think they did an excellent job with the staging as well. And as you can see, there's not too many um, walls in here because they wanted to take advantage of that spectacular uh, view of all these buildings. I wonder what it would look like at nighttime. Uh, sometimes I wish we could have shot this at night. I think we got to do that more often, Zach. What do you think, right? Just to get that, like, I think uh, the golden hour, yeah. right? And uh, yeah, so uh, another thing that the listing agent sat was saying was these, this is one of the few um, condos that has a wraparound building, or sorry, the wrap, wraparound balcony with the three bedrooms. So follow me down this way. I'm gonna show you guys the views of the uh, south side over here. And right down here, we have Emory Barnes Park. You're gonna always have unobstructed views and you actually have peekaboo uh, peek views of Falls Creek right down there. And this is not gonna be ever obstructed. You actually have a nice little water feature down there as well. Um, I think this is pretty cool. Unreal. Yeah, we don't see that uh, very often where you have a designated park right beside your building. Just like the city. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I believe this is considered Yale Town, right? Yeah. Uh, this is an amazing place to live in downtown Vancouver. And of course, you got all these buildings here. And I'm pretty sure it would look pretty cool at nighttime. You got 180 degree views. I believe that is your south side right down there. And then, like I said before, it wraps all the way around. You get to check out these amazing views of the TD building right over there, Scotia building. You got the Shang right over there. And behind those buildings, you actually have the north uh, mountains as well and this is amazing right you got your very own private balcony and over here I believe this is your uh, this is where you hook up your natural gas barbecue right over here and this is completely private that is the balcony we were on before which is yours as well from the uh, one of the bedrooms over there Overall, an amazing area to hang out especially on a sunny day like this I think this is really really cool very special all right, so let's go down that way, Zach, and back into the house. Um, once again, I just want to mention the staging in here is awesome. I really like this. I like that it's white and very light. Tons of light coming into this area. All the walls are white. And uh, once again, beautiful choice of the engineered hardwood. And it complements actually the uh, Sub-Zero fridge really nicely as well. It's almost kind of like this uh, very similar color, actually. So uh, there's three bedrooms in here and a den. The den is over here, which I forgot to mention to you guys. It's just being used as storage. Uh, I don't want to pop it open because there's uh, quite a bit of stuff in there, but it's a pretty big room as well. You can use it as storage. You can use it as a den as well. So follow me down this way. This is uh, bedroom number two of the three. And um, Currently, this is staged as the office, and I would probably do the same thing as well. If I lived, if I bought this place and I lived here, I would put up my desk exactly how they've done it right here, and I would just, you know, work in here, take advantage of this amazing view. Just look here, look out this window all the time, and then you could pop this open, let a little bit of breeze come into this area as well. Uh, overall, it just it's it's hard to describe these views with words. I mean, it's like the, a commercial office space. Yeah. In your own house. Exactly. Exactly. Like. I don't know what else to say. It's, it's brilliant, it's, spe it's spectacular, it's breathtaking, it's amazing, right? Um, let's go check out that view one more time from the master bedroom. All right, so beyond this door, we have your master bedroom, a good sized room. Once again, that same view that we saw before and uh, they've staged it very well in here as well. I like that the walls are all white and uh, 
I want to show you guys something else as well. So we got some nice sleek baseboard at the bottom and the casing I really like. And what I'm noticing in a lot of the high-end homes now is that it's going back to this thin look. I think that it makes it look very modern. So down this way we have the closet and then of course in the closet you got a lot of space to hang up all your clothes. Um, we've got some drawers on this side. We've got a bunch of rods to hang up all your clothes as well. Zach, so I'll let you come into here. And then behind me, we got the drawers right here, white cabinets. I like this a lot. And then I'm gonna switch spots with you. So when I walk into this area, it gives off a feel of a spa like washroom. One of the things that stands out right away, one of the two things that stands out right away is this amazing marble that we saw before and also the faucets that are coming right out of the wall. I think that's a really, really nice look. And there are some mirrors here and behind the mirrors, we have that same look and design that we saw earlier in the powder room where you can neatly conceal everything that you wanted right in here, which allows you to keep this clutter free. So what I would do if I was in this washroom, I would turn these lights down low. That's pretty sweet. This is a floating vanity and you got the LED right underneath. This, now this actually feels like a true spa in here. That's pretty cool. And then you got the tub on this side. I'm just gonna turn the lights back on. On this side, we have the tub. This is a designated tub. There's no shower here. The shower is actually specially made for just that area over there. That is pretty sweet. And this is a nice big soaker tub. And one of the things I want to point out in the shower is the shower head. The shower head right here, which is pretty big, is a Grohe. Grohe is ger German, uh, made in Germany. German engineering, very nice. It's not made in China or anything like that. Very high end. And that sums up the tour for this amazing condo. Uh, thank you, Sat, for letting us tour your amazing listing. And now we're going to be actually interviewing him. Thank you guys for watching the tour. And now we're going to be interviewing the agent of the property. Sat, please tell us how you got into real estate. Um, long time ago. So I, I got in the business about 11 years ago. Uh, interesting times. I, was, I had just finished my first year of university. Yeah. And I had like, there's family ties to it. Yeah. Like my dad was in construction at the time, not heavily, yeah. but he had done it before. Nice. So I had a little bit of a tie to it there and he definitely gave me a little bit of a push nice. to say, hey, why don't you explore this? Yeah. So I actually went and did that. That <laughs> summer I went and got my real estate license. Okay. I didn't expect to really do it. I thought of it as a part-time thing. Yeah. Hey, I'll do this while I go to school. Yeah. Because again, I was studying business yeah. and I was taking finance and marketing. Yeah. So I actually went and did my license. Yeah. I Loved it. Yeah. I got into the market that summer. Nice. Um, it wasn't easy, yeah. but I really loved it. That was uh, 2011. 2011, nice. Yeah. Okay, so you've been obviously doing this for a very long time. And if you know Sat, I know Sat for a very long time as well. Actually, we go back all the way to like elementary school. What I can say about him is that he is a very hardworking realtor and he is super, super, super uh, successful. So what I want to ask you is how did you think of the name PPMT and you obviously started this with Amar Dhaliwal as well. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that situation. Okay. Yeah, it's an interesting dynamic and I appreciate that. Like yeah. um, PPMT, honestly, there's there's nothing very, what I would say PPMT? unique. Well, what it is, stands for Premier yeah. Property Marketing Team, yes. right? And, and anytime you get into real estate, the ideal is, well, you wanna, you wanna market you know, the nicer properties, but it's also about the premiere. Yes. Like, you know, it's like a movie premiere. It's like yes. the initial thing and you being in the market too, you know, when yes. you list a property, it's the first two weeks that are crucial, Absolutely. right? So that's what it was about. It was about the premiere of a property and doing it right mm -hmm. from the beginning. Yeah. So we're able to showcase the property. Um, in terms of like how we started and why that started, I, I would say there's a multiple reasons why we started the team. Yeah. One I think was definitely based on necessity and market demand. It seemed like that's kind of what people needed. And when I say people, like yeah. as a realtor, like you've done it as well. When you start, yes. you get your license, you don't really learn how to actually sell real estate. You don't learn how to run the business. They don't teach you that. You get a license. Yeah. Right. So I saw a lot of young realtors come in and I was like, man, as a realtor, you have to wear so many hats. Yes. You're your own admin. Yeah. You're your own marketing. Yeah. You're your own bookkeeping. Yeah. You're your own sales guy. Yes. And it's like for a lot of people, that's very overwhelming and me included. Yeah. Okay. So uh, give some advice actually to the new realtor that's just starting off. What would you tell someone out there that wants to be a realtor? Like, what would you say to that person? I think there's two things. People yeah. ask me this all the time. Yeah. One, 
A lot of people say, should I try it? Don't try it, do it. Yeah, okay. Everybody says, do I try? you don't try real estate, because if you try real estate, you're gonna be that person that says, oh, it was this, 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 and that, and said 10 negative things about it, yes. because it's not that industry, you don't try it. If you're yeah. gonna do it, you do it, cool. and you commit yourself to it. Yeah. Okay. So I would say that's number one. Yeah. Number two, join a team. Okay. Honestly, it will accelerate your career probably three to five years, mm -hmm. because you're gonna be able to do the realtor activities. Yeah. Right. Instead of sitting there trying to generate a Facebook ad or sit behind a desk and do something as a new realtor, yes. because you can't outsource that immediately. Yes. Where you should be focused on the realtor activities. Yeah. I agree with you 100 percent. Yeah. And the, the last realtor that I actually interviewed said the exact same thing. Uh, she said, uh, make sure you get on a team. And, and, the, and what I said to her at that time, and I'm going to say it again, yeah. is that uh, if you're around five millionaires, you're going to be the sixth. If you're around five successful realtors, you're going to be the sixth one. For right, sure. you rub shoulders with those type of people and that's what happens. So, okay, so this is obviously your listing right here. What do you like most about this condo? Honestly, um, this condo, I think there's lots to love about it. Yale Town, yeah. the location, amazing finishings. Yeah. Like all that stuff is great, but for us, it's the location. And when I mean location, I'm talking about location of the building, yeah. but then location within the building, the exposure. For sure. So this unit being a Southwest corner yeah. faces, faces Barnes Emery Park okay. and being you know, towards the park, one, you're never gonna lose that. Yeah. Because of the gap between you have between and other buildings, yeah. that's not going anywhere. Absolutely. The city's not taking parks away, so that means yeah. more light right and it's just more privacy mm -hmm. and no obstruction of your views in the future Absolutely. and I, I think that's the intangible yeah mm -hmm. okay switching back to uh the lifestyle of it what motivates you in the morning what do you like most about real estate you know what motivation is i feel like with this business it's i love what i do yeah Right, and, and I think that's partly why I got into it too, is you saw people who were successful in this business really yeah. loved what they did. For sure. And like, I think my wife would attest to this too, like the biggest complaint she's had is I work too much and it's because it doesn't feel like work. Yeah, for sure. Right, Absolutely. so, I mean, look at this. yeah, like right. it doesn't feel like work to me. Like there, and you know what, it's not all glorified either. We've all yeah. seen the HGTV and stuff and like yeah. they make the life of a realtor look completely different. Absolutely. We know when you put in the work, it's not like that. Yeah. But like, it sounds cliche, but I actually just really love what I do. That's awesome, man. Yeah. And real estate, honestly, is pretty fun once you get going. And like Sat mm -hmm. said, if you are a realtor, uh, jump on a team and then uh, you don't have to lead generate and all that kind of stuff. And then when you get into the daily stuff, uh, you will become, I think, successful very quickly. And then when you do become successful really uh, quickly, then it's a lot funner when you're showing the multi-million dollar properties and you're closing these big deals. And it is actually a lot of fun as well. So last question for you, where do you see PPMT in 10 years? 10 years, honestly, my vision for us is, is to be a brokerage. Like, and oh, when nice. I say brokerage, um, not in the natural brokerage sense, yes. but a brokerage in the sense of a one-stop shop. Mm -hmm. um, because again, if for those of you who don't aren't in the industry, being a realtor is a little bit different because you get your license and you interview brokerages. It's not like a normal job yeah. where people interview you, you interview them because essentially anybody will take you. That's right. right? You're paying the fees. But ours, it's a little bit different. We wanna have a one-stop shop in the sense that we wanna be able to service a large database of clientele. Yeah. And by that, I mean, we got the re residential, which yeah. is everybody's bread and butter when you start. Absolutely. But we really like to hone and focus on the developer development land. Yeah. So we like to really be in a position where I can sell a developer a piece of land. Uh -huh. We can offer them project marketing in-house where we can market that product for them. Yeah. And then when we're marketing that product, people who wanna buy theirs may need to sell their home where we send that back to our resale side okay. and we're still being able to do that. Nice. But do it where we maintain a minimum standard of mm -hmm. service. Yeah. And I think that's the only way to do that is have your brokerage where you don't allow just anybody to join you. You want the right people um, yeah. who, who meet the criteria of, For you sure. know, just your morals and everything else yeah. to, you know, go along with it. That's a, that's a big goal and I like that a lot. And that's not the last question I actually forgot. There was one other question I wanted to ask you. Many people may not know this about Sat, but he is actually a very successful real estate investor as well. Um, what do you think about the market and where it's uh, headed? That's a million dollar question. Um, honestly, nobody knows where it's headed, yeah. but like even going back to like when I studied, you know, business and economics, right? The basics of anything is, is supply and demand. And I yes. think honestly, it just comes down to that, especially with Vancouver, mm -hmm. we're such a different market. Yeah. The problem here is like, with supply and demand on this, let's look at the supply side, yeah. right? In Vancouver, yeah. there's only so much supply. We're landlocked to the north of the mountains, right? You got that beautiful ocean that we can see there to yes. the west. Yeah. So there's only so much land. And I think on the demand side, yeah. 
people are going to want to live here, yes. right? It's yeah. a safe political climate. Yeah. Um, the weather that we have, yeah. it, people, regardless, are going to want to live here. So I just feel like that demand curve is always more heavily weighted than the supply that we have here. Yeah. And because of that, I don't see anywhere else but up, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think that you nailed it. I think that it's a land constricted, right? And to the south, we have America. And on the other side, we have mountains. So there's only so much land that we have. And if it's yeah. not housing, then it's an ALR. And that's, it's really hard to get it, land out of ALR. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a nearly impossible. Yes. And housing is a basic necessity. Exactly. Right? And I think that's what sometimes people forget. They said, well, it's so expensive. But at the end of the day, somebody's going to buy it because, well, somebody needs to live there and rent it. Absolutely. That sums up the interview. I hope you guys enjoyed the interview and the tour. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And see you in the next episode.